The humanitarian crisis both inside and outside Ukraine is more grim by the day. A heartbreaking scene just outside Kyiv as a baby boy says goodbye to his father, a police officer. The boy and his mother are among thousands fleeing the area. Russia opened a passage for them under a temporary ceasefire agreement, but Ukraine is accusing Russia of shelling the southern corridor leading out of Mariupol. More than two million people have now fled Ukraine, according to the United Nations, and a million civilians are internally displaced. Olina Stokos is one of them. She's the deputy director general at the National Committee of the Ukrainian Red Cross Society. She was forced to evacuate with her family from Kyiv when the city came under shelling. She's in a shelter in Venezia, in the center of the country. Hi, Ms. Stokos. Good to meet you. Thank you very much for uh, making the time to share your experiences with us. Uh, good evening. Thank you for inviting. Uh, first of all, uh, where are you and how are you? Well, uh, thanks God I'm fine. Uh, I'm in a more or less safe place. Uh, I was uh, working from Kyiv region uh, a couple of days ago. I stayed there, but I had to escape together with my family because uh, massive shelling began in the area where I was based. Uh, the neighboring village was uh, totally destroyed by the um, ballistic missile. That is why I moved to central Ukraine, to Vinitsa, uh, where I, I now stay with my family and work from here. And what was it like to be in Kyiv uh, during that shelling? Well, it was scary. You cannot even imagine how it was. Uh, well, you, you can imagine, I, I think, but this is something that I con cannot even describe. This is like a horror. You cannot sleep, you cannot eat. Uh, every second you think that you will hit by the missile. And every evening uh, I was thinking that, mm, oh God, uh, let me live uh, until the morning. Let me stay alive. And that was... That, that was just a horror, uh, and uh, um, um, I have one peculiarity, I'm eight month, uh, months pregnant, and it's uh, even more stressful in my condition nowadays. Oh my goodness, I can't imagine. Uh, what was it like to leave? Like, and I ask because, of course, we've, we've seen all these uh, images of, of people trying to leave, and it's, it's very difficult, and they're still obviously very afraid of the shelling and the attacks from the Russians. Yes, yes. Leaving the location where, where, where I was based was also stressful. Um, we left uh, early morning at, uh, at the end of curfew um, and we were afraid not to be shot down by, by, by the aggressor because we have many cases when civilians are killed in their cars. That is why uh, the first couple of hours were very stressful and when we left uh, the hottest area it became easier. So now, now it's, it's nice. I'm happy to be here in fact. Yeah, I imagine I was going to ask you like you must have a sense of relief but at the same time knowing so closely what everyone there is, you know, in and around Kyiv is going through, it, it, you must also feel, um, you know, much sadness just, just thinking of what they're enduring at the same time. Yes, uh, and um, uh, I'm thinking about my home, about my house in Kyiv, uh, and um, I'm not sure if uh, I will have a house in a couple of days, in fact. Uh, you're also, of course, you, you serve with the, with the Red Cross. You, you work with the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. and, and your experience is, is, of course, one that, you know, t two million people have been forced to, to, to leave their homes behind. Many of them have left Ukraine. Uh, some, like you, have moved to other parts of Ukraine. Can you tell me a bit about your level of concern for just the sheer volume of refugees? Well, uh, the volume, as you uh, correctly mentioned, uh, the volume of refugees is huge. Uh, now, according to the UN Refugee Agency, uh, two million people officially crossed uh, the, the border uh, of Ukraine, uh, finding their uh, like shelters somewhere abroad. Uh, the number of internally displaced people is also increasing uh, every hour. So it's uh, now more than one million. Uh, and as a Red Cross, we have to, uh, to assist to help both categories 
categories of people, those who are on the move to the Western border, because they, those millions of people, they have to wait to stay at the border, uh, at the border crossing points for a couple of days sometimes, uh, that they, they need uh, um, uh, safe places, uh, they need water, food, uh, and other, um, uh, other supply, basic supplies. Uh, on the other hand, we have to assist those people who left their homes and uh, are trying to find a new location inside Ukraine. They also need support from the Ukrainian Red Cross. That is why we are targeting our, uh, we are like um, targeting both categories uh, of these people with our humanitarian action. And, and, I, and I wanted to ask you what kind of challenges you face. We spoke with somebody with the UN Refugee Agency uh, last week mm -hmm. who was describing for us how difficult it is even when, for example, addressing those who are internally displaced to find people like truck drivers to deliver those su supplies to them. Mm -hmm. are, is the Red Cross finding those, those same challenges? How difficult is it to get the help to people who need it? Yes, so, well, um, situation differs first uh, in different parts of Ukraine. Um, well, the conflict uh, uh, is escalating on an, hour ba on an hourly basis. That is why humanitarian needs uh, change uh, on an hourly basis as well. Uh, if we speak about the regions of Ukraine, the most difficult situation is uh, uh, in the east of Ukraine. This is Kharkiv, Mariupol, uh, Donetsk and Luhansk regions, uh, north Chernihiv, south Kherson, uh, Sume uh, in the north uh, Kyiv region. Uh, this is a disaster around Kyiv. Um, because of missile attacks against civilians, people have to stay in these regions uh, without water, electricity, connection and food, and we have to somehow provide these. Uh, many of these people live in, an, in unprepared shelters. Uh, across the country, almost everywhere, we see uh, the shortage of fuel and water. Um, also, in addition to that, uh, there are specific cat categories of people who suffer even more um, because of uh, the ongoing violence. These are people with disabilities, people with medical conditions, or um, uh, wounded people, uh, and people who are sitting in basements and cannot get out. Because as soon as they get out of their basements, they will be killed immediately um, by the aggressor. Uh, all these categories of people should be provided with medicines, specific medicines, uh, water, food, uh, whatever, and they are sitting there without electricity, without connection, like uh, without anything. Uh, so this is the situation across the country. Uh, of course, uh, as a Red Cross, we are trying to, to support all, all of those people um, with our resources, which are not enough, unfortunately. On that note, then, before I let you go, uh, what is your message to uh, Canadians watching who uh, really f feel uh, like they want to, like they need to help? Well, um, um, out of the basic uh, uh, needs that we have, uh, these are we need to um, to provide first aid kits uh, to people everywhere, trauma and injuries kits, uh, medical care for the wounded people, uh, food, hygiene, water. Uh, we are doing our best uh, to uh, to deliver this uh, to, to to those who need it. Um, um, Another specific, well, difficulty that we have, challenge that we have, we cannot get to uh, all those people who need our support because of heavy, heavy shelling. Uh, so we have to wait for a ceasefire. We have to wait until uh, it is safe to get to those people. Uh, and it's very difficult. Um, in Ukraine, we have, uh, in Ukrainian Red Cross, we have 500 staff. 6,000 volunteers, uh, all of them are participating now in our response and uh, uh, all of them can be attacked any, any minute. So we are working in very dangerous conditions, uh, but we will continue working anyway because this is our humanitarian mission. Well, uh, my message is to consolidate our efforts to support the Ukrainian Red Cross and other humanitarian organizations uh, delivering the um, assistance to people. Uh, if we speak about Ukrainian Red Cross, uh, there are uh, like several ways of supporting us. One of them is uh, going uh, to our website where it is possible to donate or contacting your local Red Cross, like, for instance, Canadian Red Cross, through which you can uh, help us. Okay, I'll leave it there. Ms. Stokos, thank you very much again for sharing your, your observations, your time. I, I hope you can stay safe and, and best of luck with the delivery of your baby. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.